Welcome back to the channel. This is Trinity Storm, and you are watching first part of What If Naruto Found Hidden Lab in Waves. If you enjoyed this video, please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. Now, wasting no more time, let's start the story. Konoha Hospital, 10:08 a.m., July 10th. Naruto became concerned about Hanada's condition after her crippling match against Neji and went to see her. Yet, when he went to the receptionist to ask where Hanada's room is. The receptionist refused to answer Naruto's inquiries and threatened to kick him out for disturbing the peace. Naruto went outside, knowing that arguing with the receptionist was a waste of time, and proceeded to locate Hanada's room by peering through each window. After about three minutes of searching, he noticed Hanada in a hospital bed, hooked up to a variety of medical equipment, through a window on the second floor. A hand grabbed Naruto and dragged him into Hanada's room as he tried to get Hanada's attention. Naruto looked around to see who had drawn him in and froze when he saw Kuranai Yuhi, Hanada's sensei. She growled as she stared down at him with her crimson orbs. What are you doing here, Uzumaki, and why are you trying to get in through the window? Naruto rose to his feet and looked at Kuranai. I tried going up to the front desk but the nurse wouldn't tell me what room Hanada-chan was in. I wanted to make sure she was okay after what Neji Teme did to her. She was one of the only people in the academy who cared about me, and like she said, I never go back on my word because that's mine and her nindo. Kuranai smirked. I'll give you five minutes, then you have to leave because visiting hours are over for the morning, she says as she walks to the door. She cares about you. If you break her heart, I promise I'll break a part of you that will make you lose all interest in girls, understood? Naruto sighed as Kuranai walked away, his legs uncrossed. I have to remember not to irritate her. He walked to the bed, took the chart, and looked at it, but couldn't make heads or tails of it. Perhaps planting paint bombs in the Uchiha compound while Iruka sensei was teaching us medical terms wasn't such a good idea. After hanging the chart back up, the only sound in the room is the continuous beeping of the machines connected to Hanada. He shifted a chair next to the bed and paused for a moment when he noticed Hanada had a big chest, but he'd never seen her without her big coat. He pushed those thoughts aside, sat down, and took her hand in his. Hanada-chan, I'm not sure if you can hear me or not, but I'm going to train really hard this month and I hope you can be there to see it. I'm going to show Neji that fate isn't predetermined. Once the exams are over, I'd like to get to know you better. We could go out to lunch. I'm not sure what you like to eat but we can always go for ramen, and if things work. A smirking Kuranai emerges from the shadows a few seconds after Naruto leaps out the window. Are you going to pretend to be asleep all morning? Hanada slowly opened her eyes, her face flushed with embarrassment, and began poking her index fingers together. It's only a block away. In the meantime, Naruto is strolling down the street. Okay, the first thing I need to do is find Kakashi-sensei to help me start my training. I'm hoping he'll teach me a lot of new jutsu, he muses. As Naruto continues walking, he notices Kakashi approaching him. Okay, Kakashi-sensei, when do we start my training? Kakashi quickly tires and shouts as Naruto rants on about all the super cool jutsu he wants to learn. Naruto, shut up and listen to me. I'm not going to teach you. I'm going to train Sasuke for the finals. Naruto looks shocked at his sensei. But what about me? If I'm going to keep my promise to Hanada, I'm going to need training. Kakashi takes a deep breath. Naruto, you must pay close attention to what I'm saying. The truth is that you have no skills as a ninja. You were the dead last in the academy, with some of the worst grades I've ever seen, and you only graduated on a technicality. Ever since you became a ninja, you've relied on pure dumb luck, you rush into battle without thinking, and all you've ever done in a fight is throw shadow clones at the enemy. As Kakashi continues to rant about how bad a ninja Naruto is, he looks down, 
tears streaming down his face, as he listens to his sensei's words. Naruto, fed up with Kakashi's verbal assault, looks at him with rage in his eyes and yells. Shut the hell up. You're supposed to be my teacher, but all you've taught me is how to climb trees. Now you're just standing here being a hypocrite. I remember the words you said the first day we became a team, in the ninja world. Those who break the rules are trash, but those who abandon comrades are worse than trash, and now you stand here and you're abandoning me to go train Sasuke. As Kakashi raises Naruto to his eye level, he grunts. Now you listen to me, filthy fox demon. I will not stand here and be lectured by you, Kakashi says before throwing Naruto to the ground, but before he can respond, Kakashi is slammed against the wall. Looking up, I see Gai, Anko, Ibiki, and Hayate, with Anko holding him against the wall. Ibiki takes a step forward. You have a lot of guts to treat your student that way. Kakashi exclaims. Don't get involved. It's between me and my student, and you have no jurisdiction here. Kakashi looks up to see all the Jonin forming a wall between him and Naruto as Anko releases him from the wall. He spits a wad of blood out and says. Whatever. You can have the damn brat. I have better things to do. Then he vanishes in a whirlwind of leaves, and all the Jonin turn to look at Naruto only to find him gone. Damn Kakashi. If I see him treat the kid like that again, he'll figure out how many snakes I can summon, Anko said. I totally agree with you, that kid has a lot of potential, Ibiki said. I couldn't agree more. His flames of youth burn brightly. Guy added. We should tell my grandfather about this, Asuma said, and everyone nodded in agreement before disappearing. After a minute. Naruto runs several blocks away to let off some steam. As he turns a corner, he collides with Sakura, causing both of them to fall with a grunt, followed by the sound of breaking glass. Sakura begins to sit up and notices the new glass figurine she purchased shattered on the ground. Her face scrunches up into a rage. She begins to yell at Naruto after leaping to her feet and looking down at him. God damn it Naruto, don't you ever pay attention to what you're doing? Do you know how much money that glass figurine cost me? I spent months looking for it, not to mention it was a limited run. You better be able to pay for that. But you wouldn't care, would you? As Naruto rose to his feet, he began to apologize. I apologize, Sakura. I don't want to hear your excuses. Just give me the money. It's 5,000 Ryo, Sakura said. Naruto gave her a wide-eyed look. I'm sorry, but I don't have that kind of money at the moment. Of course you don't, you probably spent it on ramen. Whatever, I don't care. Just get out of my way. All you've ever done is be a pain in my neck. Why don't you get out of this village? Nobody even likes you, Naruto, you are just a clanless orphan whose parents probably threw in a dumpster because they could tell how much a moron you were going to be. I wouldn't be surprised. Naruto couldn't believe Sakura was saying these things to him. She knew his parents were a source of resentment in him. Naruto locked his gaze on her. I want you to apologize for what you said about my parents right now. Sakura burst out laughing and managed to say in between laughs. You become Hokage the day I apologize to you. You're not leaving until you apologize, Naruto declared emphatically. Sakura throws a punch at Naruto's face, but she is tackled by a large black dog with an eye patch before it can make contact. Sume Inazuka approaches the two of them as the dog has her pinned to the ground, its teeth inches from her face. You have a lot of nerve, you little brat. Let her go, Kuromaru, you don't know where she's been. He walks back to his mistress and speaks to her in canine, and she chuckles. Kuromaru says you should stop using shampoo and get out of my way before I kick your skinny ass across Konoha. 
As for the glass figurine you said you bought for 5,000 Rio, I know for a fact it's only 250 because I bought one for my niece the other day. The fact that you were trying to con him out of that much money shows you are a disgrace to all Leaf Kunoichi. Sume places a hand on Naruto's shoulder as Sakura scrambles to her feet and flees. Are you alright, pup? I'll be fine, I'm not having a very good day, Naruto replied before telling the story of what happened with Kakashi, whom he had known since he was a small child. When he finishes telling her what happened, she uses language that he never heard growing up on the street. If I see his sorry ass, I'm going to neuter him and use what's left as a chew toy for the new training dogs. Naruto laughs out loud but manages to say. If you do, please allow me to sell tickets. Sume joins him in his laughter. Just make sure you split the winnings with me, okay? So, what are you going to do for training for the month? I would offer to help, but I have Kiba to train. Naruto finally responds after recovering from his laughter fit. Don't be concerned. I'll be fine. Well, if you need any assistance, come look me up, you got it? She says as she reaches out to ruffle his hair. Just watch out for yourself and eat something other than ramen. You're going to need the energy for training. Naruto's eyes welled up with waterfall tears. Why is it that everyone always picks on ramen? Sume exclaimed. Naruto walks up the street after saying his goodbyes, deep in thought about what he'll do for training. He smiles as he looks to the left, especially when he notices Ino reading a magazine at the counter. Yamanaka Flower Shop is a flower shop in Japan. When she hears the doorbell ring, she looks up to greet the new customer. Welcome to the Yamanaka flower shop, how may I assist you? Oh Naruto, what are you doing here? She asked, her face smirking. Are you here to buy Sakura flowers? She notices his sad expression and walks around the corner, placing her hand on his shoulder and speaking softly. Naruto, tell me what happened. Naruto became enraged after telling her what had happened earlier with Sakura. Naruto, don't listen to her, she doesn't know what she's talking about, and I'm sure your parents would be very proud of you, Ino says as Naruto hugs her and thanks her for the kind words. They parted ways, and she spoke once more. What exactly are you doing in a flower shop? Do you have any idea what kind of flowers Hinata might like? Naruto inquired. Ino's face lit up with delight. Are you telling me you've finally realized she's had a crush on you since we were in the academy? Naruto responded by laughing and scratching the back of his head. I wouldn't go that far yet, but I intend to ask her out for dinner after the exams. Well, it's about time you two got together, and as for the flowers, you want to get moon flowers, which she usually buys a couple of every month, Ino finally replied. Thank you very much, can I have an order sent to her at the hospital? Naruto inquired. Not a problem, come up to the counter, Naruto said, following Ino to the counter, the platinum blonde pushing the register's buttons. Okay, one order of moon flowers. Do you want to include a card? Naruto smiles. Please, yes. Ino puts on a friendly smile. Don't worry about the card. I'll help you write it. Thank you. Ino, how much do I owe you? Naruto inquired. Ino examines the register. It comes to 49 Ryo, Naruto says as he pulls out his frog wallet and hands her the money, eliciting a slight giggle from her. Alright, the flowers will be delivered later this afternoon. Thanks Ino, I have to go get ready for training, Naruto says as he waves goodbye. After Naruto has left the store, Ino's mother enters from the back. It's past time he moved on from that Haruno girl. I completely agree with you. Mom, do you mind keeping an eye on the store while I run this order to the hospital? Ino inquired. Inoiki nodded, a big smile on her face. It's fine, you can take the rest of the afternoon off. 
I'm guessing you're going to look for Sakura. Ino scowls darkly and nods. Before you leave, I have a question. An order of moonflowers with a card costs 44 Rio. How come you charge him 49 Rio? Because I'm going to get some cinnamon buns. They're her favorite snack, and it might help them get together faster, Ino replied. Inoiki shook her head, a big smile on her face. I swear, I should never have taught you how to be a matchmaker. Ino walks out, turning around and laughing, before returning her gaze to her mother. But it's so much fun, and you know how cute a couple they'll make, and who knows. Maybe they'll let me be Auntie Ino in exchange for helping them get together. After 16 minutes. Ino walked up to the front desk of the hospital after leaving the bakery with a small box of cinnamon buns. Excuse me, but could you please tell me what room Hanada Hayuga is in? I have a delivery for her. Certainly, the nurse says after a brief glance at the chart. She's in room 206 on the second floor. Ino smiled and thanked her before taking the elevator to the second floor and walking down the corridor to room 206. She knocked on the door, and Kuranai opened it a few seconds later. I apologize for bothering you, but is Hanada awake? I have a delivery for her. Kuranai took a look behind her. Are you open to visitors? Ino asked before being let in, seeing Hanada sitting up in her bed. She placed the flowers and cinnamon buns on the nightstand and sat next to the bed. How are you doing, Hanada? She inquired. I'm fine. The doctor said I'll be able to go home in a few days, but I won't be able to train for a month, Hanada replied. I'm sorry to hear that, Ino said, reaching over to the flowers and pulling out the card to give her. I appreciate the flowers, Ino, Hanada said. Oh, those flowers aren't mine. They're Naruto's, Ino smirked at Hanada's crimson face. Yeah, I was surprised when he entered the store, and even more surprised when he said he was there to buy flowers for you. Now, can you tell me everything that happened? Hanada started to explain how Naruto came to visit her, but she was too embarrassed and pretended to sleep, inducing a loud squeal from Ino. Hanada, that is so romantic, you should know that Naruto told me that he is going to ask you out to eat after the exams, Ino and Kuranai both said, their faces bright red. The first chance we get, you, me, and Kuranai sensei are going to go shopping for an outfit that will knock Naruto right out of his sandals. By the time we're done, he won't recognize you. Hanada was finally over her embarrassment, and tears of joy streamed down her cheeks. I appreciate it so much, Ino. Kuranai stood off to the side, a smile on her face, pleased to see her student in such good spirits. Excuse me. Ino, but could you please explain why you didn't include Sakura in the girls' day out? Ino's face contorted into a scowl. I don't want anything to do with her anymore. Is this about your fight from the preliminary rounds, Ino? Kuranai inquired. No, this has nothing to do with that, Ino said before exhaling and telling them what Naruto had told her. With shocked expressions on their faces, Hanada's heart monitor begins to pick up in pitch, prompting a nurse to rush in to check on her. Yes, Ino and Kuranai agreed before Ino went on. She just found out something that irritated her. Very well, but please don't do it again, she can't afford too much strain on her heart, the nurse said, receiving nods from all three women before leaving and closing the door. I'm sorry Hanada, I didn't mean to upset you, Ino said. It's okay, you have nothing to apologize for, Ino, Hanada said kindly after calming down. Alright, let's get back to planning our day out. Exclaimed the Platinum Blonde. Business District, 1041A, M. Naruto felt a cold shiver run down his spine a few blocks away. I'm expecting something big to happen soon, he muttered to himself. The first thing I need to do is get new training equipment, and there's only one store in the entire village that'll have it. 
He walked across the village to one of the stores that always treats him well, the Silver Star, and looked up at the familiar sign. As he walked in, he noticed Akari, the owner's wife, sleeping with her head on the counter. Putting on the famous Uzumaki grin that had sent ninjas fleeing since he was a child, he thought to himself that it had been a long time since he had pulled a prank while tiptoeing to the counter before taking a giant breath. If you even think about shouting, Naruto, I'm going to use you as a training dummy, she warned. Aw oh man. How do you always know when I'm going to do something? Grumbled Naruto. I'm a mother, which means I have a sixth sense for misbehaving children, Akari replied, standing up and stretching her back, chuckling at Naruto's pout and crossed arms. Okay. Naruto, now that we've cleared that up, how can I assist you today? I'm in the finals, so I'll need enough equipment to train for a month, including new clothes. I love orange, but I think it's time for a change, Naruto explained. Yes, 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 finally. I've been telling you for years that if you wear that much orange, it's like a giant bullseye. In response to her comment, Naruto blew a raspberry, but before he could blink, Akari's hand flew out and grabbed his tongue causing him to flail his arms around and beg Akari to let go. Will you behave if I let go? Naruto nodded, and she let go while laughing a little. Let's see about getting you some new equipment and clothes to make sure you look good. I'm picking all of your new clothes and I'm not going to take no for an answer. Okay. I trust you, Naruto said, nodding. Alright. Now take off your jacket so I can look at you. Akari said before Naruto did what was requested. She started walking around him, looking him up and down for about three minutes before nodding. I have an idea. Go sit in the chair while I get the clothes. Walking over to the chair and sitting down, Naruto began to consider what he would do for training until he remembered being back in the land of waves and those small structures he discovered in the woods on the way to the bridge, which he never returned to. I suppose I could always go back and see what's in it. Who knows, it might have something that I can use to beat Neji. If I win, the other competitors will still be there. He remembered everything Kakashi had said about him earlier, about how he's always acting like an idiot, charging into battle without thinking. I believe it is past time for me to begin changing the way I do things. If I'm going to change my appearance, I should also change my behavior. He was so deep in thought that he didn't notice Akari yelling his name until she reached out and knocked on his head, snapping him out of it. He looked at the clock and saw that it had been more than half an hour before returning his attention to Akari and seeing a massive pile of clothes, which caused him to sweat and look between the door and the clothes. Don't even think about running Naruto. I'll get you out of that orange jumpsuit one way or another, Akari reminded him. Naruto nodded as Akari walked over to the front door, flipped the sign to closed, and locked it. I want you to take those clothes into the changing room and try them on, and I want you to come out and show me so I can help decide, Naruto said, picking up the clothing in, much to Akari's amusement, having to model the various outfits. She occasionally went shopping for more clothes. Before Naruto emerged from the changing room, dressed in black ninja-style pants, gray combat boots, and an armored mesh shirt similar to Anko's under a black leather trench coat with fingerless shinobi gloves with metal plates on the backs, his headband now acting as a belt buckle. How do I look, Akari? Naruto inquired. With wide eyes, Akari looked at Naruto. Naruto, I can assure you that you will start turning the heads of all the girls in the village, but you need a haircut. Naruto spoke while standing in front of the mirror, admiring his new outfit. I'll admit it's a new style for me, but there's something missing. Give me a moment. He walked into the store and returned a few moments later wearing visor-style sunglasses with a red line running through them. Nice addition, Akari said. I completely agree that it completes the outfit. Now that we've got you a new outfit, let's get you some custom weapons. It took him 30 minutes to find what he was looking for. Okay, Akari, this will suffice for the time being. Naruto said. 
No, hold on, Akari said as she went into the back of the store and returned with a small box. I was going to give this to you for your next birthday, but now's as good a time as any, she said as she placed the box on the counter and opened it for him, revealing six more scrolls. What are these? Naruto inquired, perplexed and intrigued. These are the collective knowledge I gained as a kunoichi, Akari replied, smiling. I'm sorry, but I can't take these. What about your daughter? Don't you want to pass on your knowledge to her? Naruto protested. In response, Akari burst out laughing. Naruto, you know as well as I do that she has no desire to be a kunoichi and is perfectly content running her store. I remember when you used to have a crush on her. Naruto's face flushed when she reminded him of that time. Very funny Akari. I was five years old at the time, and she was one of the first people to be nice to me. I remember how you used to follow her around. You know, she's still single, Akari said, smiling. Naruto's face became even more flushed. Okay, okay, can you please stop teasing me now? He begged. Alright, I'll stop now, but there are a couple techniques I was able to acquire in my short career with my fighting style as well, and I know it's a more feminine style, so maybe one day you can give it to your daughter, or my granddaughter if my daughter ever decides to finally find herself a boyfriend, Akari said. Naruto grinned. Good luck with that. As much of a tomboy as she is, all the boys are too scared of her now because she'll beat them senseless, not to mention their jerks who just want to live off her grocery store so they don't have to work. Akari agreed and placed all the scrolls back into the box. So, Akari, how much do I owe you? Nothing at all, Naruto, this trip is on me, just make sure you tell everyone where you got the clothes and equipment so I can get more business, Akari replied. Naruto leapt over the counter to embrace her. You have no idea how much this means to me, she says. Alright, enough of the mushy stuff, let me take care of your haircut, then you can go start training, Akari said as she let go of the hug. What style will you give me? Naruto inquired. I'll just trim it down, Akari replied, leading him to the chair and seating him. Have you made any headway on the book you've been working on? I did finish a chapter last week. I'm delighted to hear that. Please send me a copy when you're finished. You're the one who told me to start writing after all, and you said it would help me calm down. And I was correct, wasn't I? Akari inquired. Yes, you were. I'm not a big reader, but it's fun, Naruto responded. Akari stood back after finishing the haircut. See, I trimmed it down and took a few inches off. I like it, Naruto said as he stood up and placed the box inside the new trench coat storage seal. I'm not going to Konoha for training. I'm going to the land of waves. Akari gave a nod. You look after yourself now. I promise you, Naruto said, and noticing the wall clock on his way out said it was around noon, so he left her shop and went to Ichiraku's for lunch. Hokage Tower, 1.38 p.m. He approached the secretary as he ascended the stairs, and when she looked up, she let out a loud scream. The Hokage's office door swung open, revealing the frantic third Hokage. Amy, are you all right? What made you scream? Amy, still shaken, raised her hand to point at Naruto. Hirazen Serutobi, the third Hokage and god of Shinobi, stared in disbelief at Naruto. Is that you, Naruto? Absolutely, like my new outfit? Naruto replied, smiling. Hirazen simply nodded. I must say, it's a vast improvement over the orange jumpsuit. I know, right? Akari helped me choose it, and she also gave me a new haircut, Naruto said. I see. Come into my office so we can talk. I was about to send someone to find you. Amy, what do you think of Naruto? Here is an inquired. You look very handsome, Naruto, 
Amy said, his cheeks flushing slightly. Thank you very much, Naruto said as he entered the office with the third Hokage, who closed the door behind him and sat at his desk. Just so you know, Naruto, my son, and a few others have already informed me of what happened with Kakashi, and I've already sent someone to get him. I want him to apologize for what he did. I never expected him to do that when I originally placed him as your teacher. I thought he could be neutral with you. I've already had a few people put their names forward to become your new teacher. Naruto simply nodded. I understand. That's why I came here. I needed your permission to return to the Land of Waves for a month. Akari gave me a couple of scrolls to practice with, and I'd like to get out of the village for a little while. Between my sensei and my teammate, today has not been my day. Oh, I forgot about that. Sume has also informed me of that incident. Sakura will be doing D-rank missions for the next two months without pay, and I can guarantee you, they will be the most demeaning missions possible. As for your request, I'm not supposed to let you leave the village during the exams, but given that you were regarded as a hero in the Land of Waves, and given that you have come to me with the request, I will make an exception and let you. That won't be a problem. I'll be happy to get away for a while. I'll go pack now. I'll be leaving in the morning, Naruto replied. Very good, check out with the front gate and send me a message when you arrive in the Land of Waves, Hiruzen said. As Naruto stood up to leave, he gave the Hokage his trademark grin. Just wait a month, you won't recognize me. I'm going to win the entire exam. I'm sure you will, and best of luck with your training, Hiruzen replied. After leaving the office, making sure to say goodbye to Amy, and once out of the tower, he realized there was nothing else he needed to do and no other plans, so he went to his favorite training spot in the woods. As he walked down the street towards the woods, he noticed he wasn't getting any nasty looks or whispers behind his back. I only changed my clothes and got a haircut, and they don't even recognize me. And they call me an idiot, Naruto reflected, shaking his head in disappointment. Because he was almost there, he stopped by his apartment to drop off his packages. He'd pack tonight. Naruto's apartment, 756 p. m. Naruto walked up the stairs to the top floor and unlocked his door, then stepped inside to gather his supplies and place them in a bag. He examines it after packing all of his supplies. That should do it, he thought, then remembered the book he'd been working on. He walked over to the desk and opened the top drawer, seeing it and smiling at the title. Battles of the Heart, Love vs. Honor he smiled proudly as he remembered when he first started this book, about a year ago. And to think, when Akari first suggested that I write a book, I laughed at the idea, but now I like it, and who knows. When I finish it, I could talk to the old man about getting it published. Looking at the clock, he noticed it was almost 9 o'clock, so he ate some ramen and went to bed. As he lay in bed, thinking about all the training he'd do over the next month, the last image in his mind was Hanada's pale-eyed visage as he drifted to the land of dreams. Wave Village, June 11, 4.33 p.m. As Naruto walked through the land of Wave's village, he noticed the repairs that had occurred during his absence and was relieved to see that the community was getting back on track. He could almost taste the happiness in the air, as opposed to the melancholy atmosphere that pervaded the village when he first arrived for his first real mission. When Team 7 arrived in Wave, the streets were littered with trash, all of the buildings were in disrepair, and the homeless, including children, were begging for food. Looking around the village now, he noticed that all of the dilapidated buildings had been demolished, leaving empty lots for new structures to be built. The trash that had once lined the streets had vanished. Walking through the crowd and seeing all the children running and playing around gave him a satisfied smile. He reached down to pick up a small ball that bounced off his leg, looking down. Hey mister, hey mister, can we have our ball back? Naruto looked up to see it was Inari, a young boy he had saved during the wave mission. Well, 
Look who it is. I told you I'd return, Inari, Naruto said cheerfully. Inari looked at Naruto for a few seconds before recognizing him and leaping into a hug, tackling him. I can't believe you're back already! exclaimed Inari. Hey, I promised you I'd return, and I always keep my word, Naruto replied. Have you seen my grandfather and mother yet? Inari inquired after Naruto had left him. No, not yet. I just arrived, and I see people have been working hard. Inari smiled broadly. I know, right? After you and your team left, we went to see if Gato had anything in his mansion that we could use to fix up the village and get supplies, and there were a lot of valuable things still there, so we were able to do a lot of the work faster now that the bridge was finished. Well, I'm glad to see you guys back up and running, Naruto said. So, how long are you staying? Inari asked, smiling. I'll only be here for a month to train for the Chunin exam finals, but I'll make time for you, Inari, Naruto promised. Well, okay, but make sure you go see Grandpa and Mom. Remember what happened the last time you were out late and Mom called you? If she finds out you're here and you don't go see her, you'll be on your own, Inari warned. Naruto fixed his gaze on Inari. Are you trying to blackmail me, you little brat? No, of course not. I mean, my mom isn't standing right behind you with her arms crossed or anything, Inari replied. Naruto's back stiffened and sweat streamed down his face as he slowly turned around to see no one there. Naruto turned around when he heard laughter and saw Inari running down the street, laughing his head off. Looking at Inari and the ball in his hand, he took careful aim and threw the ball, nailing him in the back of the head, the other children laughing off to the side. Naruto approached Inari with a triumphant grin. Let that be a lesson to you, don't try to prank the prank master, Inari said as he sat up on the ground, arms crossed and cheeks puffed out. Now that you've had your fill of pouting, let's go see your grandpa and mom. Inari shot to his feet. Okay, but this isn't over. I'm going to get you one way or another. I'm sure you will, and I'll make sure to repay you tenfold, Naruto promised as the two made their way to Inari's house, swapping stories about what had happened since Team 7 left. As the two walked up the road, they heard a young woman's high-pitched scream, and Naruto pushed Inari into a bush and spoke in a harsh whisper. Listen carefully, you stay in the bushes until I come back to get you, don't make a sound, and if I'm not back in 20 minutes, I want you to run back to the village as fast as you can. Do you understand? He asked, receiving a nod of the head from Inari. Good, just sit tight, I'll be back soon, Naruto said as he jumped up to the trees and moved toward the screen. It didn't take him long to reach a small clearing where he saw four men, one adult and two youths like him, all kicking a bound, green-haired girl. Naruto could hear what they were saying as she screamed and begged them to stop. I can't believe you thought we'd be your friends. Why would we be friends with a freak like you? The fact that you believed it shows what a moron you are. You are nothing but a demon. As one of the males picked up a stick and prepared to hit her with it, Naruto jumped out of the trees and yelled, Shadow Clone Jutsu. Causing over 500 clones to swarm the three males and beat them down. Because they were caught off guard, the fight didn't last long before Naruto unwrapped some ninja wire and tied up all three of them. After securing them, he approached the girl, only for her to try to wiggle away. Please, please, please don't hurt me, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, she begged, her eyes welling up with tears. It's okay, and I'm here to help you. My name is Naruto, and I'm from the Hidden Leaf Village, Naruto said, noticing her headband, which was tied around her right nicep. You're from Waterfall, right? He asked, smiling as she nodded her head. Can you tell me your name? My name is Fu, she replied. Nice to meet you, Fu. Okay, I'm going to pull out a kanai to cut your ropes. Is that okay with you? Naruto asked. 
When he saw her nod, he took out the knife and did as he had promised. She sat up and hugged her knees once she was free. Don't worry. Everything will be fine. Are they your sensei and teammates? She spoke in hushed tones. They were, but they went rogue and kidnapped me. They were going to sell me for money because I'm the Jinchuriki of the Seven Tails, and they thought one of the other ninja villages would give them a good price for me. She burst into tears, and Naruto could hear her whisper to herself. All I've ever wanted was friends. Why can't I make any? Naruto touched her shoulder with his hand. I'll be glad to be your friend because I understand what you're going through. I, too, am a Jinchuriki with the Nine Tails. She hugs him tightly before he can finish his sentence. Would you like to be my friend? Yes, I will, they both say after about ten minutes of letting her cry it out. Stay right here, and I'll check on those three. Naruto approached the three downed men and noticed that none of them had a pulse or any sign of life. Well, at least you won't have to worry about them hurting you anymore, he said, pulling out a scroll and sealing the bodies. Man, I'm glad Akari taught me how to use Fuinjutsu. I can't make them, but I can use the scrolls. He put the scrolls in his pocket and planned to take them to a bounty hunting office. When he turned around, he noticed Fu staring at a red cylindrical backpack with holes in it. He approached her and could hear her crying again. Are you okay? Fu looked at Naruto and nodded, telling him softly that the backpack was the only thing she ever received from her mother. Don't worry about the holes. I can fix them. Okay, now I need to pick up a friend. Do you think you can keep up with me? He asked, receiving a soft nod in response. Naruto walked up to the bushes as the two of them returned to the road. You're free to leave now, Inari. Tsunami's son slowly rose to his feet and looked around. So, what exactly happened? Naruto got down on one knee and placed a hand on Inari's shoulder to calm him down as he was about to panic. Just breathe, Inari. We're going straight to your house. Now I want you to climb on my back, and then we can go, Naruto said as he swiveled around for Inari to climb on. Fu, follow me. Tsunami's house, 5.06 p.m. They arrived at the house in no time. Naruto knelt down to release Inari, opening the door and calling out. I'm home, mom. Tsunami's voice could be heard somewhere in the house. It's about time you came home, and I was about to start dinner, she said as she came around the corner and came to a halt when she noticed a familiar looking boy and a green haired girl. My goodness, is that you, Naruto? She approached him, bent down, and hugged him, which he returned. Glad to see you, too, Naruto said with a smile. Tsunami stood up and looked at the strange face. And who could you be? My name is Fu, she said. Well, nice to meet you. Tell me, are you Naruto's girlfriend? Tsunami smirked. Naruto and Fu both flushed bright red. Room 206, Konoha Hospital. I know this great clothing store called the Silk Kimono where we can get you an outfit for your date with Naruto, Ino explained the plans for their girls' day out. I agree with you. I frequent that store. I'm confident we can find an outfit for you, Hanada, Kurenai said. Hanada, who had been taking notes in a small notepad, scowled and snapped her pencil. Hanada, are you alright? Both Ino and Kurenai inquired. Yes, I'm fine. I'm not sure what happened. I just felt as if someone took something from me, Hanada replied, slightly perplexed. That's odd, has that happened before? Ino inquired. Not that I recall, Hanada replied, shaking her head in agreement as she pondered the possibility that Hanada had forgotten something. The only thing that comes to mind is that someone is trying to set Naruto up with a girlfriend, Ino said. 
If she even attempts it, I'll show her what the gentle fist is capable of. Ino and Kuranai both burst out laughing. What happened to Hanada, the shy little girl? I've decided to be strong for Naruto, Hanada stated confidently. Tsunami's house is located in the land of waves. Naruto was sitting at the dinner table with his friends when he felt a chill run down his spine. Fu and Tsunami both looked at him with concern. Are you alright, Naruto? Tsunami inquired. I'll be fine. It's just that for the last couple days, I've had cold chills down my spine every now and then. Anyway, back to the topic we were discussing. The Land of Waves appointed your father as its leader. How is he handling the responsibilities? Naruto changed the subject. Surprisingly well, after I threatened him with repercussions if he didn't cut back on the drinking, Tsunami replied innocently. Naruto erupted in laughter. And he paid attention to you? Tsunami's face became very dark, and she responded in a very sweet voice, as the entire room became ice cold. You'd be surprised what a woman is capable of. Naruto's only thought at the time was, the first chance I get, I'm picking up some books on women. The sound of the front door opening relieved the tension. Tsunami, I'm home. Said Tazuna, gruffly. We're in the kitchen, and we've got visitors. Tazuna entered the kitchen carrying a stack of papers. I've said it before, and I'll say it again. This paperwork multiplies faster than I can do it. He looked up to see Naruto laughing his head off on the floor. You said exactly what the old man always says about his paperwork, Naruto laughed. Tazuna put on a happy face. Well, unless it's the little brat. Naruto rose to his feet, pouting. I'm not small. I just haven't hit puberty yet. The entire room erupted in laughter. All right, I'm going to start cooking, Tsunami said. Can I assist you? I've always wanted to learn how to cook, Fu inquired. I'd be delighted to teach you, Fu, Tsunami said with a motherly smile. Fu rushed over to embrace her. I really appreciate it. Tsunami went over to the cabinets and looked inside. I'm out of brown rice. I knew I forgot something at the market. Don't worry, I've got this, Naruto said, creating a shadow clone and sending it to the market. Tsunami gave Naruto a friendly smile. Those clones are very useful. Oh man, I wish I could do that, it's so cool. Grumbled Inari. Inari, how old are you? Naruto inquired, receiving a perplexed, nine. The academy recruiting age starts around six to seven, so technically, if you wanted to, you could learn to become a ninja. All you need to do is get your mom's approval. Inari looked at Naruto, stunned, before turning to his mother. May I, please, mom? I'll have to think about it. I'm not going to say no, but I'm also not going to say yes. I'll talk to Naruto alone about all the risks and how much it'll cost to send you to the academy, Tsunami said. Naruto reached for his backpack and rummaged through it, removing a small book. It's a good thing I brought this, and you can borrow it, Inari. It's a beginner's guide to molding your chakra, so why don't you spend some time reading it first? Inari took the book and went into the living room to read it. Just then, the shadow clone reappeared, carrying a bag. I hope you don't mind, Tsunami, but I picked up a few other things. Naruto explained. That was very thoughtful of you, Naruto. Do you think the two of you can behave while Fu and I are making dinner? Tsunami inquired. Tazuna grumbled as she was treated like a child. Yes, dear, but first I'll get me a drink. Tsunami reminded him, you can have one glass, and received a yes ma'am before turning to Naruto. Well, I guess I should write a letter to the old man anyway, he said before the shadow clone vanished. Hey, that's strange. I just got my clone's memories. I didn't know they could do that. 
Just one more thing to put in the letter. I guess, Naruto shrugged as he went to get the supplies he needed to write his letter while the occupants of the kitchen heard a shout from the living room. This book does not make sense. They all laughed but ignored it. Tazuna preoccupied with getting his drink while Fu and Tsunami began preparing dinner, and Naruto began writing his letter, trying to make it as legible as possible. Beginning letter. Mr. Old Man. As agreed, I'm sending you a message to inform you that I've arrived in the land of waves. As I walked down the street, I noticed all of the changes that had occurred. The village is getting back on its feet, and most of the buildings have been repaired. There is no trash on the streets, no homeless people living on the streets, and the grocery stores have food. Children were running around the street, laughing and playing. This is how I met Inari, Tazuna's grandson. Can you believe it, the little brat tried to play a prank on me soon after I ran into him? He attempted to play a joke on me, the prank master. But I was able to reclaim him. We were walking down the road after we finished laughing when we heard a girl scream. I threw Inari into the bushes, told him not to move or make any noise, and leapt through the trees towards the scream. I saw three men beating on a bound girl and knew I had to intervene when one of them was about to hit her with a stick. I flooded the clearing with clones, taking them by surprise and quickly securing them. I went to check on the girl, and she screamed and begged me not to hurt her, but I was able to calm her down enough to learn her name. Fu is a Kunoichi from Waterfall Village, and her name is Fu. She said those three men were her teammates who had gone rogue and were planning to sell her to another ninja village. That's when I discovered she was the Jinchuriki of the Seven Tails. After that, I checked on her teammates and discovered that they were all dead, with pills in their mouths in case they were apprehended. I placed the bodies in a scroll, which I intend to convert into a bounty hunting office soon. After picking up Inari, we went to Tazuna's house, where I learned that the village elected Tazuna as the country's leader. That's about it. I'll write you a letter next week. Naruto Uzumaki, the next Hokage and the Prank Master. P.S. Did you know that when you dispel a shadow clone, it gives the user the memories it gains? If that's the case, why not use them to do all the tedious paperwork for you and then collect the memories? Letter Ending Naruto smiled as he placed the letter in an envelope and signaled a hidden leaf messenger bird to deliver it to the village. Fu and Tsunami had finished making dinner and were setting the table by the time he finished writing the letter. Do you need assistance? Tsunami turned to face Naruto. No, we're fine. You three go to the dishes for dinner. During dinner, Naruto told them about what happened at the Chunin exams, including his fight with his sensei and teammate and his request to come here to train for a month to organize his thoughts. So, Naruto, do you mind explaining why you decided to come back here to train? Tazuna inquired. Well, when I was here the first time, as I was making my way to the bridge for the fight, I came across some structures in the forest, and I didn't get a chance to go back and look at them, so I thought I'd come back and look, Naruto explained. Tazuna stroked his chin, thinking. I believe you may have discovered the ghost structures. It's a legend around here. Sometimes they're there, sometimes they're not. I remember my grandfather telling me stories about them. Well, I'll go look for them in the morning to see if there's anything I can use to help with my training, Naruto said. 9 PM. Nothing exciting happened for the rest of the evening. It's bedtime, everyone, she said as she noticed her father passed out on the couch. Inari tried to fight back, but a stern look from her sent him fleeing. Fu, you'll be staying with me tonight, Naruto, please use the guest room. Thank you, Tsunami. I appreciate you allowing me to stay here again, Naruto smiled. Naruto, you will always be welcome in this house for all you have done for this country, Tsunami replied. As Naruto lay in bed, he couldn't stop thinking about what he'd learned about the structures. 
It sounded very suspicious, buildings that appeared and vanished seemingly at random. If I find anything that points to ninja activity, I'll send a letter to the old man. I just hope there aren't any ghosts, Naruto said before falling asleep. 12th of July, 6.30 a.m. The next morning, I was the first one to get out of bed. Tsunami came in a short time later to find the kitchen filled with a delightful aroma, so Naruto decided to be helpful and began to cook breakfast for everyone. When she looked over to the stove, she saw about 10 Naruto's in aprons preparing a delicious smelling breakfast. One of them turned to smile at her when she spoke up to get his attention. I thought I'd give you the day off, so please take a seat, and do you want a cup of tea or coffee? Tsunami smiled as she sat at the table. A cup of tea would be nice, a clone replied immediately. Where did you learn how to cook? Myself. I'm an orphan, one of the unfortunate ones who never gets adopted, so I had to learn to cook for myself, Naruto replied. Tsunami looked down at her cup, thinking. Would you mind telling me what happened to your parents? Naruto motioned for one of the clones to take over the stove before approaching the table to sit with her. The truth is, I don't know anything about my parents. I don't know their names or anything. I lived in an orphanage for five years, and then the Hokage got me an apartment when I went to the academy. I'm sorry to hear that. I know what it's like not to have a mother. Mine died when I was very young, so all I have is my father, and he did the best he could raising me, Tsunami expressed sympathy. You don't have to apologize, Tsunami. I've moved on a long time ago, Naruto said. So, other than being a gourmet cook and ninja, do you have any other tricks up your sleeve? Tsunami joked. Naruto chuckled and considered it. Well, let's see, I can sew and knit, I'm good at cleaning, especially removing stains from clothes, I'm pretty good at plumbing, electrical work, woodworking, gardening, I'm also writing a book. And I can play the guitar, he said, looking shocked at Tsunami. Are you alright? That's a lot of skills to master, Tsunami finally said. Naruto simply laughed it off. I've barely mastered them. I'm more of a jack of all trades with no mastery. So, what's this book you're writing? Tsunami inquired. Oh, that? That's something I started a while ago. It's just something I do in my spare time. They talked until they heard footsteps coming down the stairs as the other residents of the house came down for breakfast. Naruto, my boy, don't go spoiling my daughter now by doing all the housework. I'll need her to look after me at the end of the month, Tizuna joked. Tsunami gave her father a disapproving look. You know what, I think both of you should start pitching in on the housework. Yes, ma'am, both Inari and Tizuna said flatly. Alright, bring down all your dirty clothes, and I'll show you how to use the washing machine, she said to her son before turning to Tizuna as Inari ran up the stairs. Well, I'm off to work now, Tizuna said almost too quickly, but received a nod nonetheless. Excuse me, Tsunami, will you also teach me? Fu inquired shyly. Of course, dear, why don't you make a list of what you want to learn, and I'll do my best to help you, Tsunami offered graciously. Yes. Fu exclaimed before taking the notepad Naruto offered up and starting to jot down a long list of things she'd always wanted to know. The mother of the house smiled as she saw how happy the child was, especially after what had happened to her the day before. I'm going to go look for those structures, Naruto said as he walked out of the house and into the woods. Alright, Fu, now that the men are gone, what do you want me to teach you first? Tsunami asked. Alright, the first thing I want to know is where babies come from, Fu inquired innocently. When that was the last thing he heard coming out the door, Naruto picked up the pace. Hokage Tower, Konoha, 708A, M. Hiruzen sat at his desk, in the midst of a life-or-death battle with the greatest foe of all time. 
paperwork. The day had only begun, and he already had a hand cramp. He placed his brush down to care for it. I've been doing this job for nearly 38 years and I still haven't figured out how to defeat this monster. How my predecessors did it, I'll never know. He looked at the pictures on the wall, swearing that the previous three Hokage were grinning at him. I still can't believe they wouldn't tell me the secret. I am the professor and god of Shinobi, and I will not be defeated by paperwork. He exclaimed, before returning his gaze to the stack, which had doubled in size. Understandably, he felt tears welling up in his eyes and doubt in his heart. A knock on the door interrupted his thoughts. He sighed and called them in. Sakura Haruno was the one. You wanted to see me, Hokage-sama? Sakura asked, a little sheepishly. Yes, I'd like to talk about something. Please take a seat, and would you mind telling me what you were doing yesterday? Hiruzen demanded harshly. Would you please be more specific? Sakura asked. Hiruzen jumped to his feet and slammed his hands on the desk, cutting her off mid-sentence. I'm talking about the way you treated Naruto, and don't even think about trying to deny it. I have several eyewitnesses who have given me a complete account of what happened. I am very disappointed in you, not only were you attempting to rob a fellow leaf ninja, but you also tried to slander his parents. I will have you know that both of Naruto's parents were great ninja. They loved Naruto so. Sakura could only nod her head, shaking with fear. Good. Here is your first mission. The Inazuka require that the kennels be cleaned. He handed her the scroll, which she took and carried to the door. And I expect you to apologize to Naruto, he said as she walked away. When she was gone, he picked up his pipe and smoked a victory smoke before hearing a little tapping on the window, which turned out to be a messenger bird. He stood up and walked to the window, opening it and taking the scroll. Thank you, my friend, he said as he sat back down, opening the scroll to read the contents. He had to read the first part several times to make sure he saw it correctly, finding it amusing that the boy can't go a single mission without something going wrong. In any case, he was glad Naruto was able to meet another Jinchuriki. He had heard horror stories about how the hidden waterfall village treated their Jinchuriki. Maybe Naruto will make a friend. Then he came to a complete halt at the end of the letter. P.S. Did you know that when you dispel a shadow clone, it gives the user the memories it gains? If that's the case, why not use them to do all the tedious paperwork for you and then collect the memories? Amy sat at her desk, looking over the day's schedule. He's got a busy schedule today on top of all the paperwork he has. It's going to be a real pain to get all this done, she thought to herself as she stood up and prepared to knock on the door when she heard a loud scream from inside. She rushed in without missing a beat. Hokage-sama, are you okay? She came to a halt when she saw the third Hokage doing a victory dance while four clones completed the paperwork quickly. I've done it, I've done it, I've done it. I finally defeated the monster. Finally, I'm free. Hiruzen chanted before freezing in place and looking to the left, where he saw Amy with her jaw dropped. He gathered his thoughts and coughed into his hand. As demonstrated by my demonstration, the paperwork will be completed very soon. What's my next appointment for today? He tried to move on. Amy accepted it and looked at the clipboard. You have a two-hour meeting. All right, I'm going to train my grandson until then, but while I'm gone, I want you to go to the mission room and put a completed S rank mission in Naruto's file, with pay and a large bonus. And make sure the money is put into his account, Hiruzen said. I'll get it done right away, and it's good to see you smiling again, Amy said as they both walked out the door to do their jobs. Wave Country, Forest, 801A, M. 
Naruto had been searching for the structure in the woods outside the village for about 45 minutes before spotting something in the distance and sprinting to it. I knew I'd find it eventually, he said, looking around the building for an entrance and discovering a large door that he couldn't open for the life of him. Then he noticed a small ring and yanked on it, which opened the door. Okay. I'm seriously starting to think maybe people are right and I'm an idiot, he muttered to himself before taking out a kanai and slowly walking in. The first large room had a flight of stairs on the right that went up and a flight of stairs on the left that went down, and a bunch of doors lined the wall on the right. Normally, I'd make a dozen clones to help me search the building, but I have to start acting smart, he said to himself, starting with the doors and working his way through the building in about two hours, discovering many interesting rooms. He eventually came across a metal door with a nameplate, Mayuri Kuritsuchi. I guess this must be the leader's office, he thought as he stepped in and noticed it was larger than the Hokage's office. There were test tubes, beakers, and other scientific equipment on every table, including a large tube-like machine in the center of the room. Naruto could see a massive machine at the far end that looked like a pipe organ, but with a lot more keys and a big screen. He had seen a computer before, but nowhere this big or sophisticated. He moved across the room to the machine and removed the sheet from the nearby table, revealing a metal helmet with numerous cords protruding from it, which he picked up to examine further. I don't see how this will help my training, and I'm certainly not a scientist. He decided to throw caution to the wind and put it on cautiously, only to have nothing happen. I'm not sure what this was supposed to do. He mumbled before noticing a red button on the table. What could it hurt? He said as he slapped the button, collapsing to his knees as wave after wave of pain shot through his body. After what seemed like an eternity, the pain subsided, and knowledge began to flash before his eyes, all kinds of equations and formulae in history that he couldn't even begin to comprehend. This process continued for another hour before coming to a halt. He stood up shakily and removed his helmet before proceeding to the machine in the back and collapsing into the chair, rubbing his head to sort through all the information shoved into his skull. He reached out and typed on the keys without thinking, the screen lighting up to reveal a massive face. Hello, Naruto Uzumaki, my name is Mayuri Kuritsuchi, and the fact that you made it through the downloading process proves to me that you are worthy of my knowledge. Now. I guess you want to know what this place is. Naruto shook his head, entranced. Are you still alive? He wondered, given that the program had a name. No, before I left here, I transferred a copy of my consciousness to this computer so that if anyone survived the process, I could help them, Mayuri responded. That makes sense, Naruto replied. So, where are you, and how do you know my name? The helmet you put on transferred all your knowledge to the computer, allowing me to know everything about you, and I can assure you that I can help you get the power you need for your fight at the end of the month. Now, this is a safe house I built to store all my knowledge. Because of the download of my experience to your brain, you know I'm not of this world. We will now begin a history of my world and what the purpose of this lab is. Wave Country, Underground Bunker, July 12th 11, 07 A. M. Naruto sat and listened to Mayuri's lecture. When I first discovered this world, I was intrigued by this energy you call chakra. I spent several years studying your people and recording several events, including what came to be known as the First, Second, and Third Shinobi World Wars. But eventually concluded my research and returned to my dimension, Soul Society. In reality, they allowed her to reject reality itself, reverse time and space under the influence of her techniques for various effects. However, this power came at a cost. The power is dependent on the user's determination, and feelings such as doubt can make it weaker, while conviction can make it stronger. Naruto listened for another three hours, being told the history of the three shinobi world wars, including videos of great battles such as the one between Naruto and Sasuke. Then it was another two hours of boring lecturing and a history lesson before it finally ended, and Naruto took a moment to absorb everything. Do you have any further questions? 
Can I gain the abilities of a soul reaper? Naruto inquired. Of course you can. Because you have chakra, it'll be a simple matter of adjusting the output of your spiritual energy. There's a chemical compound formula in this computer that can allow you, or anyone else for that matter, to achieve the powers of a soul reaper, or a Quincy for that matter. If you look to your left and choose to become a soul reaper, that machine there will allow you to make a Zanpakuto. Mayuri replied. Naruto's face lit up with a huge grin. Great. Before that, show me a list of everyone I'll be working with, he said, and several windows appeared on the screen, each with the faces of several people, which Naruto knew he couldn't count on his own. I'm going up against someone who specializes in hand-to-hand -hand combat in my fight at the end of the month. Who would you recommend to help train me against that, Mayuri? He asked. Except for three, all of the windows were closed. The first is Yoruichi Shihuin, former captain of Squad 2. She was known as the Flash Goddess, specializing in hand-to-hand, -hand, stealth, and assassination. The second is her replacement and former apprentice Soifen, who has the same specialties. The third is Kazuki Urahara, former captain of Squad 12. He had a broad range of skills and abilities. Mayuri then listed off. What are their personalities like? Naruto inquired, hoping to get a sense of who he would be dealing with if he chose any of them as his sensei for the next month. Yoruichi is a free spirit. All she wants is to live her life her way and fight strong individuals. Soifen is dedicated to her job. A by-the-books person, she has zero tolerance for those who would break the law. She believes in hard, and some would say harsh, work in her training of her subordinates. Mayuri added. Naruto chuckled and nodded, then sat back in his chair, wincing and rubbing his chin. When is this headache going to go away? Your headache should go away in two to three hours. Remember that you had a lot of information put into your head, so it will take some time before your mind sorts through it all. When it does, you should be able to memorize and learn things much easier, Mayuri mentioned. Naruto checked the clock on the wall and saw that it was around 4 o'clock, which explained his irritable stomach. All right, I'm leaving, but I'll be back tomorrow. Is there anyone I should activate right now so I can get the lab up and running? He asked. I would activate my assistant and daughter, Nemu. She should be able to clean up and get the place ready to go, Mayuri suggested. Before the tube in the middle of the room began to make sounds, Naruto nodded and typed a series of keys on the computer. After a few seconds, a small door opened with smoke pouring out, and Naruto noticed a figure in the tube before they stepped out. It was Lieutenant of Squad 12, Nemu Kuritsuchi, who began to look around before spotting Naruto and bowing. How may I assist you? She asked quietly and politely. Naruto smiled and rose from his seat. Hello Nemu, my name is Naruto Uzumaki, and I'd like you to start cleaning up and running this place. I'll be back in the morning, so please have a chemical compound ready that will turn me into a soul reaper if you can, he asked. Nemu gave a nod. You have my assurance, Naruto-sama, that I will carry out all of your orders to the letter. Stop it right there, Naruto said. I don't want some obedient servant. I hope we can be friends, but don't call me Sama, okay Nemu? I want you to tell me if you have any concerns, or if you want something, or if you think I'm too bossy, he asked. Very well. Naruto-kun, Nemu said, her face slightly smiled. Wave Village, 4.28 PM. Naruto bid his farewells before departing stopping at the market to replenish his supplies. He made it to the village in about five minutes by jumping through the trees, got some groceries, and headed down the street with a smile on his face now that the village is no longer gloomy. As he walked, he reflected on the three people Mayuri had recommended to him. I think I'll go with Yoruichi. She seems like the best bet, he thought as he passed by an alley and heard laughter with a mocking undertone. 
He jumped to a nearby roof, dropped the bags, and looked over the edge, becoming enraged at what he saw. Five boys no older than eight were cornering a young girl and saying things that enraged him. Well, look who we've got here, boys. It's the dog freak. Where's your little pack of mutts? The apparent leader had asked before punching her in the stomach, the other boys laughing at her misery. One of the other boys slammed her against the wall by grabbing the front of her shirt. Look at this filthy piece of trash. Why are you still in our village? I would think you would have left with your mom. Oh, that's right, she took off without you the moment she got the chance, proving what a disgusting freak you are. The girl only raised her head to look at them. Please, I just came here to get some food. Oh, you want food? I think we can help you, another boy said as he grabbed a trash can. Naruto jumped down between them, leaking a massive amount of killing intent and bloodlust before speaking in a low, threatening voice that sent shivers up everyone's spines. Get out of my sight now, before I get angry, and if I ever see any of you again, you're not going to like what happens to you. The boys scrambled over and pushed each other away from Naruto as quickly as they could. Naruto turned around and knelt to get closer to the girl, who was lying on the floor. Are you okay? He asked as she held her stomach and slowly lifted her head, giving Naruto a good look at her face. He could tell right away that she was at least half in Azuka and probably from her mom if those jerks were right, now that dog freak comment made sense, she had the normal Inazuka features, especially the wild, spiky brown hair to her shoulders. Her eyes were mostly yellowish, but that was probably normal. After all, Hannah looked normal except for her cheek marks. Before he could say anything else, she tackled him in a hug, bawling her eyes out and saying, thank you, over and over. In response, Naruto wrapped his arms around her and sat on the ground, his back against the wall, letting her vent, rubbing her back and softly whispering to her that everything would be fine. Naruto sat for a long time, listening to her cry and say this or that, remembering how he first met Sume. Flashback to six years ago. Naruto, a six-year-old boy, was walking back to his apartment after eating at his new favorite restaurant. Man, they sure do have great ramen. I'm going to have to go back and get more. Wonder if I can go there tomorrow for lunch. He looked up at the sky, which was clouded with rain. I should hurry up and get home, he told himself, deciding to take an alley shortcut to get there faster. He heard a whining sound behind some boxes as he walked through the alleys he knew like the back of his hand. He moved them to the side and discovered a dog lying on its side, whining in pain. Naruto could tell it had been beaten by the missing fur patches, bruises, and blood in its fur. Who could have done this to a poor doggy? Don't worry, little guy, I'll get you some help. I can't take him to the vet, they don't like me, Naruto said, trying to figure out what he should do before recalling his park friend and how he mentioned his family worked with dogs. What was his last name? Come on, think, think. It was Inazuka. Naruto took one of the boxes and carefully carried the dog in it, taking care not to agitate its injuries. He made his way to the Inazuka compound within five minutes, heavy rain, high winds, and lightning forming on his way there. Determined to keep the dog safe, he took his jacket off and wrapped the dog in it. Sume was lounging in her favorite recliner next to the fireplace, reading her favorite book, The Tale of the Utterly Gutsy Shinobi, when the pounding on the door began. Who the hell could that be in this weather? She wondered. She stood up and opened the door to see a little blonde boy with whisker marks on his cheeks, holding a box and looking soaked and slightly terrified. Who are you, what do you want, and what the hell are you doing out in this weather? My name is Naruto Uzumaki, he said as he dropped to his knees and looked up at her. Please, you have to help me. I discovered an injured dog in the alley behind my house. I met a boy named Kiba from this clan, and he said his family works with dogs. Please assist me. 
he pleaded. Sumei quickly brought him inside, placing them both in front of the fireplace and wrapping Naruto in a blanket that was hanging off the back of the couch. She then turned her attention to the box and removed the jacket, gritting her teeth at the dog's condition. If I find out who did this, I'll rip there. She saw him shaking in fear out of the corner of her eye and took some calming breaths. Sumei left the room to get some medical supplies, and while she was gone, Naruto looked to the door and heard a noise. It was a girl a few years older than him and his new friend Kiba. Kiba inquired. I was on my way home and took a shortcut down an alley, and I found an injured dog in it, and I remembered how you said your family worked with dogs, so I brought it here so I could get it help, Naruto explained, running towards the box and finding the bleeding dog. Do you know who did this, Naruto? Growling, the girl inquired. I'm sorry, I don't know, Naruto said, shaking his head. Good, both of you are here, Sume said, running in with some bandages for the dog. Kiba, take Naruto to your room and let him borrow some clothes. Hannah, go get some buckets of water. Warm or cold, it won't be healthy to let him stay in those until they dry, Hannah said as Kiba and Naruto walked out of the room, passing Hannah with a bucket of water. After Naruto had changed his clothes, they walked back into the living room, seeing Sume and Hannah on the couch, the matriarch walking over and hugging the blonde. You'll always be considered a friend of the Inazuka clan from now on, because not many people would go to such lengths for a dog they don't know. Flashback concludes. Coming out of his memories, Naruto looked down to see the girl asleep in his arms, then made a shadow clone to take the groceries, then adjusted her position and began carrying her back to the house, walking in to see Fu and Tsunami cooking supper. Is there a place I can put her? He asked, his finger to his lips. He asked, Tsunami motioning for Naruto to follow her upstairs to bring her to bed, the two of them returning to the kitchen. Okay Tsunami, who is that girl and why did I find her being beaten up in an alley by five snot-nosed brats? He inquired. Her name is Nariko, and the reason she was being beaten up by the other boys is because her mother was one of Gado's women he brought in as a plaything. She was already pregnant at the time, and when your team ended Gado's reign, she took off for freedom, leaving Nariko here, she never really cared for her and said she was nothing but a burden on her. Tsunami began to cry. Several other women in the village and I have attempted to assist her, but she is stubborn and refuses to do anything feminine. Then there's the pack of wild dogs with whom she always hangs out. She claims to understand them. That's another reason the kids pick on her. Believe me, we've tried everything, but she refuses to accept help from anyone. She explained. It's okay, and I know who her family is, Naruto exhaled as he processed everything. I don't know who her mother and father are, but I do know where she comes from. She's from my village's Inazuka clan, which is known for its association with canines and the ability to communicate with them. Most of the women are tomboyish and rough around the edges. Do you think your father would mind if I sent them a letter informing them about her? I'm acquainted with the clan head. You have nothing to be concerned about, and there are two things you should know about the Inazuka. They value loyalty above all else, and they care about their family, Naruto explained. Tsunami was still crying, but she was smiling. Naruto, if you can give that little girl a family, you do it. I know my father would agree with this decision, she stated. Good, as soon as they hear she's arrived, they'll send someone to pick her up and take her home. She'll be a welcome addition to the family, Naruto assured her. Suddenly, the three of them heard crying from upstairs. Don't worry, I'll go take care of it, he said, heading upstairs and entering the room, finding Nariko awake in bed, crying. Ho, oh, how do you know my name? Nariko asked, her eyes welling up with tears. Are you familiar with Tsunami? Naruto inquired first. Yeah, she's the pretty lady who brings me food when she can, Nariko said with a slight smile and nod. Right now, we're at her house. Now I have a question for you. 
How would you like to meet your family? No, not your mother. You see, you come from the Inazuka family, a ninja clan from the Hidden Leaf Village. They're famous for working with dogs, and if you want, I can send a letter to let them know you're here, and I'm sure they'll let you bring your dogs with you. Naruto offered. Yes, yes, yes. Was the only response he received. If they are my family, I will go to any length to meet them. Nariko explained. Okay, I'll send a letter to let them know you're here, Naruto said, chuckling. If I send it tonight, they should be there to pick you up and take you home tomorrow. Okay, let's go back downstairs for dinner. I'm sure you're hungry. His response was Nariko's stomach growling loudly, causing her face to flush and Naruto to chuckle. Embarrassed, Nariko punched him in the stomach. It's not funny, she pouted. You're going to need some training, all the Inazuka I know are strong, and that punch didn't even hurt, Naruto joked as he turned to go downstairs, causing Nariko to continue assaulting him. Tsunami turned to see Naruto carrying Nariko, who was pouting, crossing her arms, and muttering to herself about stupid blondes. Just you wait, till I'm bigger. I hope you don't mind, but I brought a friend to dinner, Naruto said, smiling. Not a problem, father is staying at his office tonight, and Inari is sleeping over at a friend's, so it appears as if you're having dinner with three ladies, Tsunami said, gesticulating as if she were a member of high society. Should I be concerned about you three attempting to corrupt me? Naruto chuckled. I'm old enough to be your mother, but feel free to take a chance with Fu, Tsunami jokingly advised. Does this imply Naruto wishes to have children with me? Fu inquired innocently. Wait a minute. Whoa. Of course not, where would you get such an idea? Naruto asked, looking at Tsunami, what have you been teaching her? You and I are going to have to review a few lessons, Tsunami said, grabbing Fu's shoulder. Could you please keep an eye on the stove, Naruto? This won't take long, she said as she led Fu out of the room when the blonde nodded. I want you to have a seat, okay? Naruto made a shadow clone and had it watch the stove in his place while he tended to Nariko, spying some scrapes and bruises. I'll go get some bandages and ointment to help you get clean. Are you going to use that spray? It hurts, Nariko pleaded. Don't worry, I have some ointment, it's a lot better and doesn't hurt, I promise, Naruto reassured her as he dashed to his temporary room before returning to treat her wounds. And now you're a doctor, Tsunami jokingly said. No, but I can patch up scrapes and bruises pretty well, Naruto said, before realizing he didn't need to for minor ones because he healed so quickly, but was now glad he had. The clone came over to tell them dinner was ready, and over the course of their meal, Naruto told Nariko everything he knew about her clan. Nariko exclaimed excitedly. That's right. There's even a dog that talks like humans, and some dogs are as big as horses, and you can ride them as well, Naruto explained. Okay Naruto, I think that's enough for now. Nariko, stop pushing your vegetables to the side of your plate and eat them, Tsunami said, his eyes twinkling with excitement. But I despise vegetables, Nariko grumbled. You'd better get used to eating them. Sume, as I previously stated, has been known to force vegetables down her children's throats. I'm not joking. I've seen her do it before. When I visited her for dinner, her son refused to eat them. She bound him to a chair and shoved them into his mouth, Naruto explained. Nariko's vegetables began to vanish, possibly as terrified as she was. After dinner, the dishes were being cleaned by shadow clones while the four occupants sat in the living room, Tsunami teaching Nariko go fish while Fu examined her freshly prepared pack that Naruto had just repaired for her, the blonde off to the side ready to write his letter to Sume and send a few pictures he had taken of Nariko. He could almost see the look on her face when she opened the letter. Beginning letter Dear Mr. Sume 
I'm currently in the land of waves, and as I was walking to the house I'm staying at for the month before the Chunin exams, I heard laughter coming from it. I jumped onto the roof to see what it was, and found five boys preparing to beat up a girl. After I ran them off, I checked on the girl. She's at least half in Azuka. She had the same eyes and features as your clan, and she confirmed that she could speak to dogs. As for her parents, the father is unknown. If you remember, I told you about the tyrant who took over the country, apparently, her mother was one of his. Playthings, she was already pregnant when Gato took her. According to my sources, the mother never cared for Noriko and said she was nothing but a burden, and she fled when Gato was killed, leaving Noriko to fend for herself. Naruto Uzumaki, Naruto Uzumaki. Letter Ending Looking up from his letter, Naruto noticed the girls had built a tent with pillow sheets and chairs, with a sign saying, No boys allowed. Standing up and walking over, he knocked on the front door, Fu's head poking out. He inquired. No boys allowed, Fu replied before blowing a raspberry and ducking back inside. Okay, you two have fun, I'm going to send this letter, Naruto said, quickly returning upstairs to go to bed early today, satisfied with the day's work. Sunrise on July 13th, Tsunami's House As the sun's rays hit Naruto's face, he sat up in bed and stretched his back until a relieved pop came before going to the bathroom and turning on the light to wash his face in the faucet. Until he saw himself. He screamed. The sound of Naruto's yelling and footsteps caused Tsunami to turn around, getting an eyeful of his face, covered in makeup and emphasizing his angry face. Understandably, Tsunami began roaring with laughter, causing Naruto to glare. Did you have anything to do with this? He inquired accusingly. No, no, I swear it wasn't my fault. I went to bed after Fu inquired about some old makeup. I swear I had no idea. Tsunami said, waving her hands to ward off the eruption of Mount. Naruto. As terrifying as her mother's side could be, and how much he liked her, if he was to prank or just embarrass her she was doomed. The only good side to that, if he did, was his age. If he was an, experienced adult, or even just a pervert, as an attractive single woman the list of things. Fine. I'll deal with them later, I'm going to take a shower, Naruto said as he exited the kitchen, grumbling about vengeance. Tsunami could at least have some fun with him, giggling when his footsteps sped up. With him gone, she reached into her apron pocket and pulled out a picture of a sleeping Naruto post-makeup assault. Just because I didn't have a hand in it, doesn't mean I won't use it against you, she laughed to herself, pocketing the picture. Naruto returned downstairs after his shower to find Fu and Nariko sitting at the table, giving them a dirty look. I'm going to get you back for that, just you wait, he promised. Nariko used or attempted to use the dreaded puppy eyes jutsu on him, saying, I'm sorry. In an exaggerated, childish voice. Alright, you're definitely a member of the Inazuka clan. That reminds me, Fu, have you made up your mind about what you're going to do? Will you return to the hidden waterfall village? Naruto inquired. No, I despise that place and will never return. Can I accompany you to your village? Fu inquired. I don't see why not, I'm sure the old man will be glad to have you, Naruto replied. I can't let her meet Ino, that's just a disaster waiting to happen, he reasoned. Inazuka compound, Konoha. Sume had just sat down at the table with some coffee in the morning paper when both of her children walked in and grabbed a pair of apples from the table. She inquired idly. I'm going to go work on my fang over fang. I need more power behind it, Kiba explained. The vet clinic is forcing me to take my vacation, so I have nothing to do today, Hannah explained, slightly pouting. Drinking her coffee, Sume had an idea and smirked. Well I'm off duty today, so how about we have a girl's day out? 
we haven't had one in a long time. Before Hannah could respond, a tapping at the window drew everyone's attention. Sumei walked over to the messenger bird and took the scroll, sitting back down at the table to read it, and both her children could tell she was upset with what she was reading after only a few seconds. Mom, are you alright? They both inquired. Change of plans. The three of us are going on a trip, Sumei announced abruptly. Where are you going? Kiba inquired. The land of waves, it appears Naruto discovered a little girl he believes is at least half in Azuka, Sumei replied, passing the letter to Hana, who was closest, three pictures falling out. Hana quickly read through it, passed it to Kiba, and picked up the pictures. He might be right. She does look like an Inazuka, Hana said, handing them to Kiba after he finished reading and receiving a nod of agreement from him. Sumei stood up and said, I'm going to the Hokage to let him know we'll be out for the day, I want both of you at the front gate in 45 minutes. She received two nods before disappearing in a swirl of leaves. Hokage Tower appeared. Two minutes later. Sumei hurried to the top of the tower and knocked on the door, stepping in when he said, enter, seeing the Hokage at his desk, surprisingly with no paperwork hounding him. Good morning, Hokage-sama. Good morning, Sumei. What brings you to my office at this hour? If I'm not mistaken, you have the day off today, Hiruzen observed. That's correct, but while I was eating breakfast with my kids, a messenger bird delivered a scroll from Naruto, Sumei explained. What has he done now? Hiruzen began to rub his temples. I see. So this is what you came here for, Sumei said as he handed him the scroll and pictures, seeing him smile as he read them. Yes, my children and I are going to bring her home, Sumei stated. All right, the three of you have my permission to go pick up your clansmen. Please make sure to tell Naruto how proud I am of him, Hiruzen said, smiling. I'll make sure to pass the message along, Sumei said, smiling. I'll also be having the equivalent of an A-rank missions pay to put in his file from my personal account done by this afternoon. Best wishes, Sumei, Hiruzen said. When she saw her children with their dogs, the Inazuka matriarch dashed for the village's front gate. We're going to run at top speed with no brakes. We should be there in five and a half hours, she said before the group dashed for the trees and headed east. What are we going to do with Noriko, mom? Hannah asked after a while. I'm thinking about bringing her into the main family, with us, Sumei replied as she moved through the branches. It'd be nice to have another girl around, and I've always wanted a little sister. Should be fun, Hannah said. Mayuri's Bunker, Wave Country, 726 A. M. Today, things are going to change. Naruto said to himself as he approached the lab. Good morning, Nemu. Were you able to get what I asked done? He made his way into the main room, spying Nemu at one of the machines, working on what was most likely the compound. Yes, I was able to get the chemicals ready. The laboratory is now at 100% efficiency, Nemu said, bowing. Okay, Mayuri, what's this chemical going to do to me? Naruto asked as he turned to the computer screen, which displayed Mayuri's face. Its main function will be to strengthen your soul, granting you spiritual powers like the Soul Reapers, Mayuri replied. Nodding, Naruto walked over to one of the tables, removed his jacket and shirt, and lay down. Okay Nemu, I'm ready whenever you are. He gave her the go, and Mayuri's lieutenant walked forward with a syringe filled with a green liquid before looking at the computer. It all depends on your soul's strength, Mayuri replied. Nemu injected Naruto in the arm, knocking him out almost instantly, only for the blonde to awaken in a strange room with giant bars running from the floor to a high ceiling shrouded in darkness, a piece of paper with the word, seal, acting as a lock, and two giant red eyes with slit pupils emerging from the darkness beyond the bars. Well, unless it's the little brat. What exactly do you believe you're doing here? Kayubi explained. 
Shut up, you idiot fox. Naruto immediately responded. I was afraid he'd lose your temper, an unidentified man said. At least he has your sense of fashion and good looks, an unseen woman commented. Naruto turned around when he heard strange voices and saw a blonde man and a redhead woman. Who are you? We're your parents. They exclaimed exuberantly, arms flailing and smiles on their faces. Naruto passed out while inside his mindscape, experiencing a strange sense of da copyright yavu. So that's it for today. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to the channel for more awesome stories like this. Thank you. See you all in my next video.